Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Talk GA, our podcast on anything and everything Grand Archive. For today, we have a special video where we're going to talk all about the PVE format. Yeah. yeah. I'm your host, Mark from Solar Games, and joining me, of course, are my co hosts, Fomi and Eva. But today, we thought, what better way to introduce the PVE format than to invite the creator oh. of PVE himself, Andrew, on the set of Talk GA? Andrew, tell us about yourself. My name is Andrew. For those of you on the official Grand Archive Discord, you might know me better as Sylvie Strong as Squirrel. Squirrels. Sylvie Strong Squirrel. Yes. Uh, for those of you who are attending events in the California area, uh, you might have seen me staffing some of those events as well. Best and judge. If, He's a judge. Yes. Judge, Thank that's you. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andrew, tell us, uh, what is PVE? So PVE stands for Player versus Enemy. And what that does for this format is a group of one to four players, typically, mm -hmm. will be playing against a pre-constructed deck controlled by a fifth person. Okay. If you're playing with four players. Mm. So we all just try to kill you. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. I'm very excited about yeah, this. How, is, how are you supposed to win when it's like uh, three or four versus one? Well, you'll get to see that coming up. Yeah. 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 Okay. So for today's video, we're going to be uh, going over to the gameplay area. And then we're going to go over the rules really quickly. So just so we can kind of get started. And then we're going to play a whole round of PPE. So the whole thing. Uh, with it, shorten like a smaller deck, simpler, simplified deck for the interest of time. But we will make sure to come back to the couch and kind of answer a bunch of questions that, you know, we all have probably what you have as well. Also talk especially about how you can adjust PVE for your own play sessions at home. Uh, so without further ado, shall we go over there and start get started playing? Yes. I'm dying to Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. All right. Let's do this. Right. PVE. PVE. This is how you play PVE. So as a player, your goal is to defeat the boss, right? Uh, the way this is done is for each damage that is marked on my champion, I will be banishing cards from the top of my deck. For you to win, you'll need to banish all the cards from my deck and my graveyard. What that means is if I run out of cards in my deck, I will take all the cards in my graveyard and shuffle it back into my deck. Okay. And then my objective playing as the raid boss uh, is to kill all of you. Let's get started right away. It'll be much easier to explain to you as I have the cards out. Okay. Sure. The way you all take your turns, it'll play like a normal turn of Grand Archive. Uh, just you are all going to take your turns at the same time. That implies that you all go through the steps and phases all at the same time. In the same way, if one of you declares an attack, all three of you are going to enter the combat phase at the same time. So are we playing first or are you playing first? You are playing first. Okay. The players, right. the players always play first. Players will always play first. Okay. okay. All right. Cool. Good Everyone action. take out your spirit. All right. right. Spirit of water. Spirit of fire. Another spirit of water, but mine's the armored one. Ooh, you're so special. Vanitas, Convergent Ruin. What? 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 But it's level two. I am level two. Ooh, okay. You start right. level two? I start level two because my card has a level stat. Okay, okay. Right. But if it doesn't have a level stat, like if it's an ally, then it starts at level zero? Correct. Okay. So you materialize also when we are the champion? Uh, so yeah, the champion starts in play. Oh. Okay. Uh, so anything that you'll need a champion for, yeah. you can do right away. Okay. Now we draw our seven. Yes. All right. Or draw what's written on your card. Mm, serene, serene win. Seven. All right. Seven. And so we can play out of order, right? Obviously, we're going to discuss a little bit, but out of order, out of turn, we can play like that, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I already have my first turn play, guys. Okay. All right. One more thing. Uh, since my champion has an attack stat, it can retaliate. Oh, when champions, you, can your champ can retaliate. When yes. you retaliate, does your champion tap? Yes, okay. it does. And so it will one. retaliate against the first thing okay. that runs into it. You don't have a choice. Okay. okay. Cool. Uh, I will play Increasing Danger. Increasing Danger! danger. Yeah. Thank you. It's group hug card, guys. All right, I draw one, and then we all put one into our memory, including I think the boss. One. It seems kind of busted in PvE because we draw three, and he, or you we draw four, four and he yeah. draws one. Mm. That's right. Okay. Is that a risk you're willing to take? Always. Always. Ask any fire player. Uh, attack you with a drown cut at Benita's. Okay, so I'll take two damage and I'll retaliate. Okay, I'll take one and you take two. Yes. I'll play next. I'll put two down. I'll put hasty messenger. I will also swing at the boss for one damage. 
Well, I'm already tapped from the first retaliate, so I'll take the one damage. Okay, on attack, I'm gonna discard a cemetery sentry and draw a card. And just to make it clear, we're not doing like a, oh, this person has to go first and then the next person has to take their turn. We're all just sharing one turn. Yes. 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 I'm done with my plus two. Yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm all done. right, we pass. All right, so it's time for my turn. So, first things first, Okay. wake up. Yeah. Second would be recollect, but since it's my first turn, I also have my own special actions. So Special actions, okay. Yes, so I will take the top cards of my deck and put it into my hand. Since there are three of you, I will put three cards okay. plus one. Okay. So your hand size is basically determined by the number of players playing against you. Yes, after that, I would put the same amount of cards into my memory. Okay. Put, not draw. Yes, not draw. Please. Very important distinction. After that is all set up, uh, we'll move straight into my main phase, where I'll start playing cards from my hand. Okay. So I'm going to take one, I'm going to reveal it, and when I play the card, I'm going to ignore all the costs. Wow, that's busted. Yeah. Oh, and also, I notice you're not even looking at your hand. Are you going to auto-play the cards? Yes. Which order? We will start from the left to the right. Okay. <coughs> Usually it should be the top card of the deck is played first. Mm -hmm. So What's the first card you play? Wild Growth Elixir. Huh. Okay. Seems so yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Mm. Second card is Bottle Forge Light. <laughs> uh oh, potions. Potion potions. deck. Okay, so it has an on enter. If it was brewed, deal two damage to target unit. Not brewed. It was not brewed because I just ignored all the costs. And I can sacrifice it to deal two damage to anything. Third card Shimmer Cloak oh, Assassin. Oh, that's a good mm, card. Stealth. Something hard for us to kill. Forge Light Scepter. So what this does is at the beginning of each <gasps> no! opponent's end phase. He can materialize cards? Yes. What the? The he deck has material cards? He has material yes, he has he material cards, cards in his main deck. That's free. <laughs> That's free. Oh my god. All right. So if you have an odd amount of cards in your memory, uh -huh. you all take two damage to your champion. Okay. That's annoying. So I noticed um, you're playing fire cards even though your champion is wind. That's allowed? Yes. Okay. So as a default rule, the raid boss has the three elements, basic elements, and norm automatically in the Okay. Okay. Wow. Not advanced. Not advanced. Okay. And all of these <laughs> cards coming out count as activations and materializations, right? Yes. Okay. So if you have something like Frostbind, you can Frostbind one of the activated cards. Okay. Okay, so that is my hand. I have no more cards to play, so we're gonna move straight into my action phase. So I have one ally. Yep. So that one ally is gonna declare attack. First, against any allies you control. Yeah. Then, if you all have no allies, then I can start declaring attacks on your champion. Mm -hmm. okay. So we only have one ally here, so I will declare attack on Hasty Messenger Hasty. with my Shimmer Cloak Assassin. Is gone. If there are multiple allies, how do you decide what to attack? So as a rule, we set up that the ally with the highest stat total will be targeted first. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 2-3 and a 1-2, two, 2 power plus 3 life is 5. So I'll be choosing that as an attack target over the ally with one power and two life. Okay, so that's all the allies I have. So I still have a champion with an attack stat. So I'll declare an attack on a champion since you all don't control any allies. So isn't it that you would attack the champion with the lowest damage and if they had tied, you would go from a clockwise order? Yes. So since uh, we have two tied for the lowest, we'll start with the player clockwise. Hey, screw you. It's fine, you can heal. Take one. Take one. Every damage on me sticks. Okay, so that's all I have to play. We can move to my end phase. End phase. I'm gonna factorize something. Which one do we hate the most? Maybe the wild growth elixir. All right, factorize it. Okay. It'll get factorized. Flip that over. All right. So now that we've reached my end phase, it's time to start banishing cards. Cool. As you can see, I have three damage, mm -hmm. and we have three challenging players. So. For each three damage that I have, I'll banish one card from the top of my deck. Ah, uh, so that's how we kill you. Yes. So here's the one card. Push in Fusion Frostbite. That and then oh. we'll remove three damage from me. Dun, dun, dun. Cool. Okay, so that's all I have for my turn. All right, it's our turn. Yeah. Okay, go. Right. Right. Banish Floating Memory to Materialize Scepter of Lumina. Grand Crusader Ring. I love the Xander one. Get a prep counter and glimpse too. All right, collect. All right, everyone recollect. Collect. Draw. Draw. 
Uh, anyone have a way to deal with stealth? Or I can snow fairy the shimmer cloak. That's rude. You're rude. I think snow fairy might be a good option because I cannot deal with stealth. Either. If you think the uh, Fortunate Scepter is really bad, I can. I, I do have a spurn. Oh, that's right. It would be odd. Yeah, kill that. Yeah, kill that. Kill we don't want that. Yeah, just kill it. Okay, let me think. <laughs> we don't respect the raid boss. I right, Snow Fairy, Shimmer Cloak, Assassin. He's not gonna do it. You're just gonna take two damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you gotta keep your keep your word. Keep my word. All right, I will spurn Ash, targeting the Forge Light Scepter. Thank you, Doki. Nice. Bye. So uh, as a regalia, since it's destroyed, it goes straight to banishment. Okay. Nice. Nice. Gone forever. Attack for one with Snow Fairy. Oh. Mm. I think I am going to blow it up with my bottom what? forge light. Oh, oh, oh. So oh, no. sacrifice it, deal two damage to target unit. Oh no. Song Frost right now. I wish, I wish you have nothing no, to I do. No, I got nothing. Your, your, your uh, stuff fairy is just gonna stand. <laughs> Rip my snow fairy. Okay, so everyone's good. Then we'll go to my wake up. And we'll right collect the three cards I have in my hand. Memory. Yeah. And then draw. Four. One, two, three. Technically Four. not draw. Put put into put, your put. memory. Yes, put. Okay, let's start with the first card. Essence of Blizzards. Oh my gosh. This is a potion deck. Like no that. on enter. Okay, Spirit of Water. What the? Hmm. So this is one of the other changes for PvE. So if I were to materialize the champion, it's going to go straight into my lineage. So now I am considered both a water and a wind champion. And on my draw step, I'm going to put one more card into my memory. Oh, so he so, leveled oh. up. So each card in your lineage lets you draw more cards? Each champion card. Oh, okay. So it's this is kind of like a, your, the boss is getting stronger mechanic. Yes. Over time. Okay, cool. A little later. Okay, so let's wake up. Recollect my oh entire my memory. God, you oh my god. Oh wait, you have so many cards. It's because I chilling touched him the turn before and now he gets those cards now. So now he gets to play like seven cards at once. This is the turn. <laughs> this is the pop off. Seven cards in my hand. And Go off, I'm Andrew. going to put one, two, three, four, plus one for the extra champion card in my lineage. Okay, this is getting hard. Boss is getting strong. Alright. Alright, so let's begin. Another essence of Blizzard. <laughs> That's not too bad. Enhance potency. Uh oh. So I can rest target potion. If I do, yep. the next time I activate one of its abilities, I get to copy it. So we'll use this on Essence of Blizzards. Okay. Manic Zealots. Repelling Palm Blast. Okay. Oh Doesn't no. Doesn't do anything, right? Uh, return all allies with two power or less to their owner's memories. Bye. 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 That's actually, that's actually uh, awesome. Yeah, that's not bad, right? yeah, yeah. They're not safe. Bad, not bad. <laughs> All right, next card is Wild Growth Elixir. <sighs> More potions. And hand potency. I guess I will do it on the other Essence of Blizzards. And then finally, Potion Infusion Frostbite. Rest target potion. If I do, it gets on sacrifice. Rest target unit. The next time that unit would take damage from a water element source this turn, it takes that much damage plus four instead. And you are a water element source now. Yes, I am you now a water, water element source. Wow. Mm. So I will rest Wild Growth Elixir with frostbite. These are all scary potions mm. now. Yes, they are. So Thank I will you. sacrifice this potion to deal, target this twice. Okay, it's dead. Deal three and three. How many spells did I play? I played four. And whenever I activate a spell card, yeah. my next attack without a weapon gets plus one. <laughs> Power. Holy moly. Oh, oh I see the problem here. Okay. Well, Mark has the least amount of life. <laughs> Bye, Mark. <laughs> So nice knowing you. let's do this. Sacrifice this. Oh my god. And on sacrifice. Oh my god. Rest target unit. So I'm gonna rest Spirit of Fire over there. <laughs> <laughs> you one shot it. <laughs> you take four more damage from a water source. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so since Mark has the least amount of damage at him, I'm going to attack him. So that's four plus four. Four plus four plus the one base stat. So nine. Nine. Okay. Look, I wish I since had I've dealt seven or my blue player damage. Dead. Your materialize costs one more next turn. It's sorry, not dead yet. Sorry, man. It's okay. All right. Okay. Now we got to resolve damage for you. Yes. So I'll get ten. So, so you pop nine and then no or banish three. Right? Banish three. Yes. 
Dominating Strike, Clarity, and Dominating Strike. Okay. Ooh. Yo, this PvE deck is sick. Um, for the purpose of PvE, does cards that say opponent, are they my opponents? No. 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 I am your one opponent. Okay. So most of the cards you'll play usually as they're written. Yeah. So things that say allies you control will only be for allies you control. Mm -hmm. If they say each player, it'll be for each player. Opponent will be you, Just for me. example. Okay, cool. Okay. Easy. Cool. I'm going to banish two floating and level up to Mordred. Mordred! The CSR! <laughs> When'd you get a CSR? What the? That's oh, not that's Xander. That's, that ain't Xander. Uh, I'll, I'll materialize as Discordia. Okay. <laughs> recollect. Type of Malice. What new heck? What the? Okay, everyone recollect? Yep, recollect. Okay. Drop turn. turn. Drop. I know what I'm going to do for the rest of the game. Oh. We're going to build up for a giant Aaron Day. Oh, let's go. <laughs> a billion Tide Diviners, Creative Shocks, and Hasty Messengers later. Both of you guys are just going crazy right now. <laughs> building up for erupting, We're building trying up for to build Aaron a giant We're grave. just trying to get there. Dominating Strike. Which ally has the highest stat total? Uh, four? The Sea Sprite. Oh, Sea Sprite, five, yeah. Two, three, okay. So we're gonna do four damage at the Sea Sprite Diver. Okay. Many this doesn't need a tap to attack? No. So the cards that I play are activated or materialized without cost. And oh, since, including tap. Yes, since resting my champion is part of the cost for the attack card, I don't need to do that. Wow. It's pretty good. Potion Infusion Clarity. Let's do it on Forge Light. When I sacrifice it, I get to draw two cards. So I'm going to sacrifice this, mm -hmm. deal two damage to Cemetery Sentry, and on sacrifice, draw two cards. You play those right now? Yes. Oh, uh, okay. Any cards that I draw during my turn will get played immediately. Okay. Enhanced Potency. I have no potion. Aha, get wrecked. <laughs> and another oh Shimmer Assassin. Oh. All right, and now because you have no cards in your library, you will shuffle your graveyard back into your main deck. Yes. So how, much, how big is that main deck of yours? Three, six, ten cards left. So. Oh, we gotta do 30 damage. Oh, well, he's dead. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Pop let's go. Let's, let's, go. Okay. Right, let's kill. Let's go, do it. it. Yeah. All right, it's waking up time. All right. Wake, All right, up. wake up. Wake up to the smell of blood. I'm gonna grab an Aaron Dite. Your night! On enter. On enter. I'll banish one, two, three, four. Uh, four. That's not that much. It's just because he's low, so I think we should try to finish it. I'm gonna so I'm gonna song of frost that. No. Your attack. That better night. So two for Riptide Slash with Arendite for 12 damage. Since you have only one thing in your grave, we're gonna put down four for a Sea Sprite Diver to eat your Shimmer Cloak. Oh, what? Whoa. Stop it. But that means you can't survive by shuffling that luck. Exactly. Right. Very good. Exactly. Would you like to kill more allies and put stuff in my graveyard? No. Not really. <laughs> two to Vanitas. No. I will first start with the Ember Song. Pain two. Ooh, it's two happening. Will put it's a happening. Counter on Discordia. Um, targeting. Oh, wait. I don't want to kill anything in the into graveyard, right? No. That gives him more life. Cool. Then I, uh, I don't target anything. Then preceding that, I will go ahead and fiery momentum you. With a sword. Oh, it's not erupting. Oh boy. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, plus two, so and plus two more, so nineteen. Sick. Yeah. Last but not least, I will erupt in Rhapsody. Oh, oh it's both. This is gone. It was both. If I can play like this in yeah. in, in, in Asiana, <laughs> I would have right. I'll banish sixteen, so I'll go up sixteen levels. And I'll tap banish this, so eighteen levels total. Plus one from Lorraine, so I'll deal 19 damage to you. Another 19. Another 19. Wow. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I just attack your Manic Zelt right now and ruin everything? Shut up. <laughs> mess, mess it, yeah. Attack face. Take one. You're really good. We're good. Yep. Very good. Final card is a bottled Forge Light. Yay. Okay, so how many am I banishing? 50, You're going to be banishing. 57 divided by three is just 19. 19 cards. All right, so here <laughs> is four. Yeah. Hands, potion, potion, fag, potions. Shuffle this back into my deck. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, eight. So you're dead? I'm dead. Yeah! We, we beat the ball! Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. He was going easy on us, right? Yeah, it was a shorter deck. Yeah, it was a small, small deck. Wow. What an amazing experience. Thank you so much, Andrew, for sharing that with us. I'm, I don't know, I just had such a fun uh, experience. Exciting game, 
uh, you guys apparently, I, I think my co host yeah, also had fun, sick. right? Yeah, yeah, PV is always fun. It's just a shame that this session was so short. Yeah, yeah. So, about that, how do we make it, like, I don't know, longer? Uh, adjust the difficulty, maybe? So, the way you can customize difficulty, besides changing the cards that you include, yeah. uh, is mostly controlled by the deck size. So, for new players, people who are playing with a starter deck or just want to learn PVE for the first time, I usually approach them with a 40 card deck. Uh, today, we had a 30 card deck for time's sake. Uh, but you all were playing your standard constructed decks. Mm -hmm. Usually for groups with those, I will come at them with sizes of 60. Okay, 60 is pretty standard for constructed decks. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Andrew, during during the gameplay, I noticed that there were a lot of rules kind of put around the boss. Like you could attack certain times, you could attack allies or only allies with the highest stat total. Um, like, are the rules put on the boss like for the purpose of this game? Why why have the boss have like certain rules? Why not just you be a separate player? Right. So you're not always going to have someone who can play as the boss. So. I thought it necessary to create some sort of kind of targeting system for the boss so that if four people show up and they want to play with four people mm -hmm. and the boss, they can do that without having someone actually control the boss. Mm. And it's also a difficulty modifier. Mm -hmm. mm. If you want things to be harder, you can sort of remove that targeting system mm. and okay. play it as someone who's fully human being behind the raid boss making all the decisions. Just trying your best to kill all the players. Yes. Oh, you could easily have one if you were doing that yeah. the whole time, yeah. Yeah, there was a time, there was a turn where uh, I could just one turn kill one. <laughs> yeah. He knew. He knew. I, I had... Well, you would have been at 14, I think. Yeah. Oh my god. So, yeah. It was close. Okay. There was actually one day Andrew and I were playtesting PvE like really early. It was just the two of us. Okay. So mm -hmm. that was pretty cool where he was able to play as the boss and as a player mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have that like, a really like objective way for the boss to behave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that you don't have to like think too hard. Okay. And so, so I won't be like, hey, why are you killing only me and not yourself? Okay. So were there like any interactions that like we should look out for that we didn't experience in this session? Mm -hmm. Like any other particular rules change that are different from normal standard play? Yes. So one very big rule change that applies to just the boss only, is how attack cards work. Mm. So attack cards with cleave, mm -hmm. they will target all players and will set every unit on the field, on the player's field as the defending unit. Uh. So it'll, if you have three players like we did today, you'll basically having three instances of cleave. Because right, mm. I'll be cleaving yeah. each player. Yeah, super good. But it but it feels just like normally cl how cleave will feel. Yeah, because yeah, cleave is basically like, like intuitively like a swipe, right? kill everything. Right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So that's for attack cards with cleave. Yeah. Attack cards without cleave, they function a whole lot differently. Okay. So normally in PVE, you'll attack allies first with your attack cards if there are any allies on the board. Mm -hmm. Once the attack card starts to target a champion. It instead targets all of the champions. Oh. oh. That's a little weird. So you 3x your damage. Yes. So I had found that it was very hard for the boss to win if it was an attack focused deck. Mm. Oh, uh, no. If all the attacks just sort of kept going at allies. Mm -hmm. So mm. right now they still do go at allies, but if they're able to get through, it is a lot more pressure on the players. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, what about like the potions? Remember how you, you the potions did have targeting? How would it target if you were not the boss or if there was nobody driving the boss today? That one's a little bit tough because there isn't like a set order that things have to happen in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still trying to figure out a answer to that that is satisfactory for me. Mm -hmm. okay. But for the time being, yeah, it is up to the players on how they want things to be Resolved. Resolved. Okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe, maybe for that deck specifically, that's one that has to be piloted by somebody versus you can build other decks that are a little bit more autopilot, right? Right. So maybe in the autonomous mode, you just don't play decks that have like more decisions. Yeah. Like a flame sweep works fine no matter how you play it. 
Yes. Right. Okay, cool. Excited. This was the first time this deck got played. Yeah. And that it was, was cool. cool. Yeah, the yeah, potions. Yeah. Like, dang, so all these cool. potions. That was fun. A potion juggler. All right. I'm curious. Do you have any like tips for building boss decks? Are there certain like things you should or shouldn't do? Uh, well, this is an unofficial format. Mm -hmm. So although in the boss does not have any official deck restrictions yeah. when they're building it. Yeah. So really it's up to the players on how to build their deck. Yep. At the very least, make it enjoyable for the group. Mm. Really, the only thing, there's only one card we need to watch out for, mm. which is Ace and Protector. Mm. Wow. Uh, because when it enters, right, you have to return an ally to your hand. Yeah. And so if it's the only ally, it'll return itself back to hand. Right. And then the boss has to play it again. Again. Oh. And then it just oh comes back loop. and forth. And you just loop so yourself to death. That's right. Yeah. yeah it's really That's really the only card we had to watch out for. Uh, that did happen at Ascent, Ontario. Okay. <laughs> oh. And uh, what we ultimately decided on was just discarding the card. Okay. Mm. Try again. Okay. So Ace and Protector on the ban list? Or, or maybe something like <laughs> if Ace and is the last card in the hand, it's discarded rather than returns to your hand. Right? So Because uh. it can't do its effect continuously. So, is there a ban list for PvE? <laughs> so right now, no, there is not a ban list for PvE. Okay. The cards that you see banned on Index are banned for Standard. Mm -hmm. And this is not Standard, so mm -hmm. you can go ahead and play those cards. Guys. Avarice. Sort of Avarice. Solar uh, Games has a Crystal Parliament for sale. Oh my god. That's uh, right, Lawrence that Crux Cheater? <laughs> yes. So, can, so can we actually play the April Fool's cards? Champions? You can. There is nothing stopping oh, you. Crooks cheater. That's not. You, can, soy. you just uh, there's not on the index anymore. So oh. hopefully you, oh, you yeah, have those images copy. around. Yeah. yeah. So I could play with my real avarice and also make token avarices using the crux cheater. E, well, it's not a token. Yes. You just generate the card. Oh, generate it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You could have multiple sort of avarices, and you level back down and level back up. See this. Yes. Okay, anyway. See, this is why it's the solar game special because now all these cards that have lost their financial OMG. value due to getting banned now have a new avenue for getting some value. So the market sort of average sixty nine dollars <laughs> and sixty nine cents. Nice. <laughs> back back to PVE. Yeah, back to PVE. Uh, well, do you think there ever will be a, P a ban list? So PVE? at one point we did have a ban list. Oh, uh, it was at it was at the very beginning. Yeah. Uh, before I even play tested this at all. So I could already see problem cards. Like Raccoon was on the ban list mm -hmm. straight wow. away. It's like the equivalent <laughs> of doing like six damage in this game because yeah. it's like yes. ba exiling or banishing two cards from the grave. And those two cards are basically your life. Yes. My philosophy regarding the ban list was let the players play what they want. If we need to make things harder, yeah. we can just make the card in the boss deck harder. Yeah. Right. Flame Street, very strong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can just include that in the deck. Yeah. And we can just let the players play what they want. Are there limitations to how many flame soups you can play in the boss deck? Technically, no. Yeah. When really? I did draft up all of these lists, I did keep it to four copies of cards. Yeah. Just so that people who are using PvE as a sort of introduction to Green Archive, they understand that they don't need to be worried about anything more than four copies. Okay. So the boss deck can have more than one copy of each regalia? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I could have, okay. you know, seven Five. Forge Light Scepter. Yeah. That's also why uh, the, the <laughs> intangible Geist is busted. This is like, put all these things that we banished back into the deck. That is true. crazy. <laughs> that is correct. How, how, much, how much change would you say uh, has been done between what you first envisioned to what we played today? Like, is it drastically different? Is it pretty similar? It is pretty similar for the most part. Everything that I set out to do from the first iteration has mostly been kept the same. Okay. Yeah, Foam and I were there when we first play tested this format for the first time, and we like, we all <laughs> felt that it was already really solid from the start. Yeah, yeah you like, put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, it was like this is already a fleshed out whole game. Yeah, like it was really fun. I think there's just in every card game, there's always yeah. going to be a group of people that are looking for something more casual than yeah. just, mm -hmm. right. you know, one on one. We're going to grind as hard as we can. People want to be able to like chill with their friends and like have a drink and yep. tell stories, you know, with each other. So yeah. I think this provides that um, experience that uh, standards just wouldn't be able to. It also makes um, deck building really interesting. Yes. Right. Like yes. It, all the 
you know, all the decks that kind of don't make sense in standard could be totally good here, or, you know, very com competitive. Yeah, like a blue, blue slime deck? Sure. <laughs> in right. this format? Yeah, like... Oh, yeah, blue slime yeah. is busted in PvE. Right. It just kind of flips this, you know, the whole uh, the whole game on its head. Um, we don't have any other format right now in Grand Archive. There's, of course, you know, hints of drafts potentially coming back. But otherwise, like, this is all we have is just standard or constructed. And then, of course, you know, um, all the unofficial formats that people might be designing. And as far as I can tell, this is the only one, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's cool. I like that we're still basically playing with the same set of rules, but the boss is still doing very surprising things, yeah. which is pretty cool. Yeah. I can, I, every, when I was playing, I kept feeling like if if we wanted to, they could they could print some very interesting cards for this format. Yeah. Um, but if you were to envision <laughs> your perfect PvE yes. card, yes. What would you? What would you? Yes. What would this card do? Destroy hmm. all humans. On enter. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> generate. Generate. X card into your lineage face down. X? Banish this card. Sorry, banish this object. You may play one of the face down cards from your lineage. It's like an insane Quicksilver. Uh, what's X? Yeah, what is X? Well, here is a little <laughs> sneak preview <laughs> of. We gotta... I've been thinking about this for a long time. You want me to have this I'll prepared? Oh, oh my gosh. god. Okay. Uh, this, does it have a name, this card? No. Okay. No name. No name card. It's a Regalia Sigil. Uh, Sprawl Shroud. By the way, I'm ignoring all costs because the boss doesn't pay costs anyway. So, you know, screw that. At the beginning of your end step, put an age counter on this object, whatever this object is. Uh, then, if there are three or more age counters on this object, deal 30 unpreventable damage to each champion. So, it's put us a, like so a death clock. It's just a huge bomb. Yeah, it's a bomb. Yes. 30 kills... Unpreventable. I think it kills everybody. Wait, Except wait. serene spirits who can like gain six more. <laughs> All right. Um, at the beginning of each end step, he's gonna make it thirty-one. By the way, after I read this for the Xander players, at the at the beginning of each end step, if you were dealt ten or more damage from a source that is both fire and water this turn, banish this object and deal thirty unpreventable damage to your champion. Huh. Okay. Wait, but that's that's to to the boss. Yes. So because okay. the boss is controlling the object. Is deemed damage to my champion. Mm. So essentially, what that means is you have three turns to do water and fire from a single source that's fire and water, doing ten or more damage. Uh, overall, or just one instance of damage? Uh, overall, for that turn. That's not too hard, but it's still pretty hard. Wait, but if you're not playing a dual element champion, then what happens? Well, the idea was because I'm generating these sigils into my lineage, mm -hmm. I get to appropriately pick the sigils. So I'm not going to pick one that you can't clear. Mm. Oh, I see. So you're kind of like creating tr little mini games for your particular pod to overcome. Yes. That's awesome. Oh, interesting. So this allows you to like it's see what the players are doing and then adjust the difficulty of your deck on the fly. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's an enrage mechanic, right? If you can't clear this in enrage's boss, you're probably gonna die. These are hypothetical cards. This is yeah, these are not. Yeah, yeah. That. but this is an official format, so you can yeah, do can what you want. Yeah, you can just them. print these and yeah, run with them. Let's okay. try it. Let's try. That's cool. It. Okay. Yeah, I'd be down. Huh. Yeah, seems like because uh, you were demoing this format at uh, San Ontario mm -hmm. um, official side yeah. event. Official side event, yes. Yeah, it seems, and like I remember seeing like. Like so many people like having really good uh, feedback on the yeah. format saying it was so much fun. So um, much glowing feedback. Yeah. Where do you see the future of uh, PVE going? The future of PVE is hard to see. Uh, I'm trying my very best not to step over the toes of weaves of the mm -hmm. short, at least when designing cards, because since I want to use this format as a sort of stepping stone for new players to get into regular Grand Archive, yeah. I'm trying to keep everything as close as I can to how Grand Archive is yeah. supposed to be played. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to explore difficulties that don't involve me bending the rules as much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or introducing extra cards that the players won't see necessarily in, uh, in, in, in the official game, right? 
Right. Yeah, because they might get used to that card and they're like, where's mm. this? Why can't I play a sigil? Right. Or like, why can't I play Gauge of Alterity in a normal game? Yeah, why can't yeah. I play for yeah, so, Experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. those are legal in PvE as well? Yes, because those are only oh, banned in standard. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Got the gears turning. So that's PvE as a format. Yeah. PvE is a side event. We're looking, I am looking very heavily into. Uh, it's been on my mind a lot ever since uh, Ontario. Mm -hmm. And I think I have an answer. Ooh. However, I don't think it's an answer that a lot of people are going to be satisfied with. So it will need a lot more finesse. Okay. So where can people find out more like updates about the format if you you add anything or change any rules? Right. So the rules document is uploaded to the Grand Archive official Discord server mm. in the content creation channel. Uh, I am authoring the entire rules document, and there is also a change log included mm -hmm. in the rules document itself. So you can see how the format evolves. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we're going to make sure to um, put a link in the description of this video, linking to the rules document and that general post. Um, if players have questions for you, generally, how would you like to get the them, uh, I guess, where would you like the questions submitted to? The uh, content creation post or DM you directly or what? I would vastly prefer they ask questions on the content creation post mm -hmm. so that the questions and the answers are visible, visible to everyone. Okay. Just at, you know, um, Sylvie's strongest squirrel, and he will answer <laughs> yeah. your questions. So thank you so much, Andrew, for joining us and showing us the awesome format uh, and sharing that with the community. Um, really happy to have you on set. So, yeah. All thank right. Thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah. Thank you. That's going to do it for us for today. Um, yeah. So. Play PVE. Play PVE. It's really fun. Play PVE. All right. Stay close. Stay PVE. Stay PVE. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>